So just got in these two guys. Figured I would uh, do an unboxing video for you. I learned some lessons, a harsh lesson that took me 10 hours to figure out. I'm adding number uh, four, maybe five. I might actually do a giveaway on this number five because it actually got ordered by mistake. I added it in the cart, paid for it, said my order cannot be processed. And then, uh, so I did another transaction. That one went through. And then uh, four days later, I had two sitting on my porch. So I think once I get monetized on YouTube, I'm going to give one of these away. So give a sub. Um, we're going to dive into it a little heavy. We're going to go into getting this thing built and also some slicer settings for you new guys and the mistakes that I made. And yeah, it should be fun. All right, so I got everything unboxed. It's a really easy setup. Pretty much all you need outside of what is included in your little hardware thing. It comes with the Allen wrenches. Is some kind of cutters to cut the zip ties. Got a bag of stickers. Here's the instruction book. Little thing of filament there. It's to hold your spool on top. Yeah. Really easy setup, probably takes 15 minutes. Unless you make the mistake I did on the first one and it took me 10 hours to figure out what the hell is going on with it. All right, so first thing it calls for is removing these four screws from the Z axis. That way that thing can move up and down. All right, so we got these removed. Next thing it calls for is removing all the zip ties. I used to call them tie wraps when I worked as an electrician. I don't know about you guys, but remove the zip ties, foam packaging. There's one there. These two, that, not you do you. So you're going to want to keep these, keep the screws that came with it. And I would also keep your, uh, your box that it came in with the foam just in case, uh, you know, something happens. You can return this thing under warranty. Probably won't happen because this thing is a workhorse. That's why people build print farms out of them because, I mean, it's just a super solid machine. No issues with the machine. Definitely some user issues on my side of things, which we'll get into in a little bit. All right, another little thing I saw. You're going to want to remove this tape here. And just swing this thing over to the side. It's going to hook to the bottom of your printer. This guy, you don't want to you want to make sure you don't smush any of these connectors or anything, you know? Just be careful with what you're doing. And then it says to put this build, build plate on, but I don't see why I have to do that. I'm just going to do that later. So now we got to put the base onto this guy, which is pretty easy. All right, so now we just cock this guy in here like that. Boom. Easy money. Next thing we're going to do is pull this little, we're going to slide this forward, pull this thing back just a little bit and pop it up like that. I struggle with this thing when I first, you know, on my first one, now that I got it down, I thought I was going to break it, you know, but this thing's solid. So now we have access to all these screws we got to put in. All these green screws, which I will show you in a second. All right, so in your little bag of goodies, you have these ST323s. There's a total of 12 screws we're going to put in with the Allen wrench that's included. Got these two with this thing pushed back. And then these 10. So I'll throw those in real quick and get back to you. Now I got all 12 screws in. Put this cover back. It's pretty easy to snap back in. We're going to want to turn this thing on its side. And this is where I messed up last time well, on the first one. Seriously, took me like 10 hours to figure it out. All right, so we got this thing flipped on its side. Make sure, you know, you're not smashing your head or whatever when you lay it down. Be careful. Um, basically, this thing, this little USB-C, this is where I messed up. This USB-C on the one, the first one I did, did not get all the way seated in there. And it caused this, when I tried to fire it up, it said, man, it made all these crazy noises. And it said something about the Z homing i don't know but 
it did uh it took me like seriously 10 hours to figure it out because it was it looked like it was in but it wasn't so be aware of that so just slide it in Get a little groove there that's easy it's got a screw there I don't want to tighten that get these plugged into the corresponding spots white to white Make sure you snap it in there nicely green to green you got this guy right here I'm gonna take that out some strong tape man yeah whatever anyway so this little thing opens here you're gonna want to get it through this channel make sure you don't pinch your wires get it through there work through this make sure again you're not pinching your wires get it tucked up in there there we go and then plug that guy in nicely and then now I'm going to tighten that screw and that's it for that all right now we're on to setting up the wiper one screw super easy um, it says to turn this thing around you know that takes a while and then uh, probably throw this guy on now seems like a good point to do it you want to make sure you're not getting fingerprints all over the top of your bill plate because that will cause adhesion issues. Oop, wrong way. So we'll get into that in a little bit though. So there's a bag called that. It's got one screw, just throw that on real quick. All right, now that we got that on, time to put the spool holder on, super easy. Slide it over here, you wanna get it close to the right Snap it on like that. You want to put your tubing on. Doesn't matter which hole. <laughs> That's what she said. And then uh, throw it in there. That seems like kind of, kind of excessively long, but we'll go with it, I guess. Ooh. All right. So, yeah. Seems a little long, I don't know. I might shorten that up compared to the other ones. Well, I guess it's gotta go down, so. Anyways, that's done. I forgot a very important step. It even says it in red. You don't wanna throw this little clip on that guy. Kinda just make sure you don't smash or pull on your tubing. Kinda holds everything in place. Pretty little slick idea. I like that. Keeps that cord out of the way. All right, so I got everything moved over. This is this resting spot for now. Powered up. You know, just plug that cord in, turn the power button on. Um, I ended up having to tilt these because I didn't have room on this old pool table, which is very sturdy, but kind of small. Um, so I ended up tilting it up. Tilting that one up which as long as you have room back and forth should be good because some of these automated systems actually have the machine tilted forward that way they can easily press uh, push parts off you know but now we're going to hop into the setup oh before i get into that power consumption i looked it up and at max these draw three amps on peak so i would say you wouldn't want any more than, I mean, four is kind of pushing it. Yeah, I think you can get away with four on a 15 amp circuit. Um, you know, make sure your wiring's right. You don't want to burn down your house. You don't want to be overloading things. But yeah, I mean, I've had no issues at all. And I like to put on, put them on a uh, surge protector, you know, just in case you get some lightning. Those are cheap on Amazon. Might throw the link in the description along with the link for the A1s. Anyways, we'll get into the start of this thing. It's pretty easy. All right, so we just hit the start button. 
English, I would assume. North America. You gotta select the Wi Fi. I guess you can skip that, but I'm gonna put this in real quick. Be right back. All right, so now we're directed to log into the account with the Bamboo app. So if you don't have the app, um, get it. It's great. It's really amazing. You can control everything on there. Stop the print, pause the print, print, look at your camera, which is not the greatest, but it's nice to have. It's got a little cover on there, so you guys know. Yeah, I mean, this I love this machine. So do that. And I'll show you what's next. All right, so once you download the app, then you scan that little QR code inside the app where you add the printer, and then uh, you're good to go as far as setting that up. Uh, now you have to calibrate the machine, which is pretty easy, too. Brings you to this screen. Just hit the start button. Probably takes like 20 minutes. All right, the calibration is complete gonna get to this screen um it's kind of nice it, it kind of gives you a warning when uh you need to lubricate your, your printer so comes in the set grease inside here on these guys and then the oil is gonna go on three sides of this All right, now on to loading the filament. Pretty easy. Set it up here. Make sure you're coming over the top. Push it all the way down this tubing. I'm going to go to the filament button. Hit load. Nozzle's got to heat up the temperature. And then you just kind of put a little pressure on there when it asks you to. It, it's kind of like the same in reverse for unloading and then loading again. Pretty easy. All right, so now we're in the slicer. It should be, you know, after you have your everything connected, you have to download the slicer and connect the app to it, and then everything should be cohesive. So this will open up, create new project. Uh, this is from an old project here. Um, now we're going to get the flow dialed in all right so you're going to come over to this menu pick you know whatever filament you're going to use i would not you know it's not set up right out of this menu i wish it was but it's not so let's say uh let's go to this let's just say that i'm going to pick that one we're going to go to calibration tab I'm going to go to this flow dynamics, do that test first. I already have it done. Basically, it prints out a little thing, and you got to pick out which line looks the cleanest. Uh, and then enter the information in here. And then, yeah, see, there's a manual and auto. I think the auto just uses like a LiDAR and scans, and it, it'll, you know, but manual is probably better. You just do a, a visual on it. So after that one's done, then you're going to check the flow rate. It's kind of the same thing. It prints out nine little tabs. And you pick out which one is the smoothest. Not which one really looks the best. Um, but which one is has the, the most smooth top surface. So you do that. Um, there's two different tests. One like gets you kind of close. And the second test gets you even closer. And that'll once that's done, so you enter the information there. It'll tell you what to do then your flow rate for that filament is set up and then we can go you know print a benchy or print whatever and get some off maker world but we'll go back to the printer i'll show you some things that i noticed that gave me some issues and then uh we're you know getting close to being done here all right so one thing you're always going to want to do is make sure your bed's clean your, your plate I saw me touching on this thing earlier so what I like to do after every single print is get some 70% ISO. Let's clean this thing off. Give it a good, good wipe down. That breaks down the oils from your fingerprints. 
probably every 10 prints or so, I'll actually take dish soap and wash it off with dish soap. You have to look, um, some, some of these plates, you know, are specific to what you can wash it with, but I looked this one up and this works. So that's one trick. Um, I noticed that when printing near an edge, like over here, this were, you know, thin parts near an edge, they might end up peeling up because I feel like the heat doesn't transfer um, well to the edges. You know, it's hotter in the middle just by a little bit. So try and keep everything in the middle as close as you can. Sometimes uh, bigger prints, you might have to bump up the bed temperature because they like to peel up. They don't, you know, sit on the bed quite as well. Let's see what else is there. Yeah, make sure your filament's dry. PLA doesn't matter so much. You know, if you've got 90% humidity in your basement, you should probably be getting yourself a dryer like that and setting your uh even your pla in there but for sure your pet g definitely run a dryer with your pet g um i think that's it's about all i can think of at the moment you guys got questions put them in the comments i'll uh do my best to answer them and uh give a like give a sub if you enjoyed this appreciate it thanks